making sure children are healthy, safe, loved, ready to learn, succeeding in school and in life. This is Our Children, a program brought to you by the Children's Trust. Good morning. I'm Jim Hodge, President and CEO of the Children's Trust. And I'm Ileana Varela with the Herbert Wertheim College of Medicine at FIU. And together, we welcome you to Our Children. Today, we're going to talk about a variety of ways the Children's Trust partners with the community to help all children succeed, from the youngest to the oldest. And we're going to start with the little ones. The program we're about to show you gets children started on the road to achievement by getting them hooked on books early on with a little help from mom and dad. Let's watch. Mail time. It's a special delivery for a young reader. Little Miracle is one of thousands of Miami children who are part of a unique Book of the Month Club developed by the Children's Trust in collaboration with the Miami-Dade Family Learning Partnership and sponsored by the Early Learning Coalition. Families can build a young reader's library delivered straight to their door. And the Read to Learn Book Club is absolutely free for every three-year-old in Miami-Dade County. Today's delivery a kid's classic. I think I can. I think I can. I spent 25 years as a career educator, and I know the importance of reading uh, to your children at a very early age. Parents need to put down the technology, pick up a book, and just read to the children. Read, read, and read. The more you read to your child, the more you develop a, a love for reading with your child, the more they're prepared for academic success. It's the power of touch, hands-on learning with a real book. The latest neuroscience research shows that interaction with a printed page leads to deeper thinking and better comprehension compared to tablets and touch screens. Why? Studies show that often the electronic environment can distract the young mind from focusing and that slows down the process of learning to read. So it's really important that parents take the time to talk and read with their children because it really makes the stories come alive. The payoff comes here when children start pre-kindergarten. She was ahead of the game once she started school. Read to Learn Book Club mailings also come with activities and parent instruction guides, professionally designed to help families build critical book bonding time, as well as excitement for the next fun delivery where children can literally grasp onto a future love of reading. Brings back so many memories of reading with my kids. Okay, so if your child is three or will be within the next six months, sign up to receive a free book delivered to your door every month until that fourth birthday. Register for the Read to Learn Book Club at thechildrenstrust.org. Now we're going to fast forward to the teen years and the program local businesses and of every size can play a part in and sign up for right now. Joining us are Deputy Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Russell Benford, Superintendent of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, Alberto Carvalho, and Roxana Vado, a senior at South Dade High School. Welcome to all of you. Russell, let's start with you. Last summer was the first time that we all rallied around the county, the school system, the Children's Trust, and the business community with a summer youth internship. Tell us why that's important and what businesses can do. Well, it, it's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about our, our youth all the time and, mm -hmm. and making sure that we provide opportunities for them. One great way to provide opportunities for young people is through a summer internship or a summer job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we all remember our first job, and, yeah. and, and no matter where you go in life or, or what you do, you always remember that first job, your first opportunity. And so it was the goal of the trust in Miami-Dade Public Schools and the county to come together to be able to expand opportunities like that for our young people. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect to the businesses here in Miami-Dade County, it's important to note that uh, these entities that are here fund the summer youth internship mm -hmm. program. So for the employers, there's no cost. Mm -hmm. um, the young people come to them prepared, they're ready to go. Yep. Uh, they have the work readiness part done. And more importantly, we're paying the salaries of the young people, the stipends for the summer. And so it's a great way for businesses, um, no matter how big or how small, to be able to give back and provide an opportunity to a young person at no cost to that business. Right. Superintendent, can you explain the, um, the school system's role um, in, in the program and what would you say is, is the greatest uh, benefit? Certainly, well, in partnership obviously with the county and the Children's Trust, uh, the school system is the actual fiscal agent uh, for the funds that are then used uh, to finance the employment opportunities for young people during the summer. The specific benefits uh, are, are uh, threefold. Number one, 
you know, idle kids are kids who are susceptible to being recruited towards yeah. wrong things. Absolutely. So during the summer, uh, the peak summer months, uh, let's create an opportunity for kids to be engaged in positive activities uh, that, uh, quite frankly, elevate the quality of their own lives. Secondly, it provides these young men and women an opportunity to shadow, to be mentored, yeah. to understand the real world of work. Thirdly, uh, the activities that actually precede uh, the summer employment program are equally valuable. So the development of interviewing skills, the specific curriculum that leads to them preparing their own resumes, and the dress for success component, uh, that really builds their personal and civic adequacies. So this is a life-saving program that does a great deal for the young people, but quite frankly, at no cost to the employer, it does a lot for the local economy as well. So it's one of those where it's success all the way around. Win-win. Win-win. Mm -hmm. Roxana, you actually had a paid summer internship at mm -hmm. the Children's Trust last summer. I know you. I know your story. <laughs> I know what a bright future you have. Tell us what, what the internship meant to you. Well, before doing the internship at the, at the Children's Trust, I was involved in a lot of Children's Trust activities, mm -hmm. which were RCMA, after-school care mm -hmm. programs, Mac, it, it was a lot, so it was pretty, it was exciting for me to go work at the Children's Trust. And the thing I would take out of it the most would be the great mentors that I created mm -hmm. that showed me and guided me through the whole process mm -hmm. and creating and getting a great networking skills. So it was a really awesome experience that I had with the Children's Trust. Well, we're very proud of you. Thank you. You should be, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, I know, Jim, that uh, before your board decided to fund this initiative, mm -hmm. you already had, had been um, involved in investing in youth employment, but what's so special about this particular partnership? I think that the, the key word is collaboration. Mm -hmm. We had an internship program, but now with the county adding additional mm -hmm. funds, we, we employed close to 1,500 teens. And as the superintendent said, that's 1,500 teens off the street, not being idle, they're being employed, uh, teaching employment skills. Uh, the county, the school system came in and placed these 1,500 teams throughout the county. So we have systems that went very well last year. We have the system in place to do it this year. What we really need is the other municipalities and the business community to really support this initiative. Russell, I wonder if I could ask you something. Um, because we spoke about this being a win-win for everyone. Um, if you could talk to business owners and, um, and corporate executives out there who may be watching, um, is there a downside for, for, for them here? Absolutely not. There is no downside to a business owner. I mean, you talked about the win-win aspect um, of this program because the, the internships are funded. One thing, and, and we heard how the students um, feel about the program, one thing that's interesting, we had interns in, in the mayor's office this past year, and I can tell you, as an employer, I think we got maybe more from yeah. the mm -hmm. opportunity, <laughs> from the interaction of the young people than the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we actually had interns sit in meetings. They had new perspectives. Um, they had, uh, they asked questions that, that we typically don't ask because we've been there for a long time. The energy level was very high in the office. I think everybody felt good about um, the interns. They felt good about the community. They felt good about the work we were all trying to do together on behalf of our children. So, you know, the benefits of this particular program are, are just countless. I mean, and so I would encourage anybody who's thinking about it, even if you have a passing thought, just give it a try. Um, because I think the young people that, that will come and, and work with you for the summer um, are really going to be a great experience, not just for the kids, but for, for us as, as employers and adults as well. Roxanne, if you can talk to the business owners, the people who can make this happen, what would you tell them? What I would say is that this is a great opportunity for them to participate. And us youth, like we're the future. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the earlier that we start practicing, mm -hmm. the better that we'll be. So it could just benefit everyone, mm -hmm. just in general. So I guess, I guess the tough part here is choosing the kids, um, right, Superintendent? I mean, there's thousands of... of mm -hmm of kids to choose from. So how do you recruit them? And when do you begin that process? How soon will you be in that process? Well, the process is actually beginning already. Mm -hmm. uh, counselors and teachers in schools actively recruit eligible candidates for the position. We disseminate information out to parents uh, via a whole host of mm -hmm. avenues, well, direct mail, uh, email messages. Uh, and uh, what we're looking for, obviously, is the same thing that the employers would be looking for individuals uh, who are civically minded, individuals who demonstrate the ability 
and the willingness uh, to compose a portfolio or resume that uh, are embracing of a culture of work and will follow a curriculum that prepares them for the appropriate placement. And then we also need to consider uh, from the early design of this initiative that 10% of the children who go into the program are children with disabilities fitting a specific profile that sometimes makes them invisible to the greater community. It's important for them to be visible, to be in a place of work. If in fact, as Roxana so ably said, you know, they are the future. So rehearsing for the future, preparing for the future by connecting them with the world of work today is something that uh, we all have a shared responsibility for delivering on. Uh, is there an age limit that we're talking about here? I think the age limit is uh, 15 to 18. 15 to 18. 18. Well, it's important to note um, that registration for businesses and students um, are on the same website, mm -hmm. uh, which has been on screen periodically throughout the segment. And so I want to mention it again. It's Miami dot getmyinterns.org. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, being here, but Deputy Mayor and uh, Superintendent, sit tight because uh, you're going to stick with us. Uh, we'll keep talking to you about some other very important things, right, Jim? That's right. After this short break, we'll talk about efforts to stem the tide of youth gun violence through an initiative called Together for Children. Stay with us. Our parents always said education is important. They wanted to make sure we got the right motivation and the right education. Everything we needed to make college a reality. Breakthrough Miami gave us all those things. It's a really fun way to learn. Now thanks to Breakthrough and the Children's Trust, I'm an engineering major at Miami Dade College. And I'm an engineering major at FIU. To find out more about our programs and how you can get your children involved, log on to thechildrenstrust.org or call 211. The Children's Trust, because all children are our children. The most important 20 minutes of your day is spent reading to a child. Make books a part of your family's daily routine. Point to and talk about the pictures. Ask your child to repeat the words. Answer questions. Talk about it. 10 o'clock. Hey, that's really good. The Enjoying books together now helps children read to learn as they grow, ensuring success in school and in life. But their success depends on you. Don't let the children in your life become a statistic. For more information, visit thechildrenstrust.org. Someday, he'll own his own company. She's going to have a career in graphic design. And believe it or not, future pediatrician. And so that your kids can succeed tomorrow, the Children's Trust is investing in them today by supporting hundreds of programs and services dedicated to helping kids and parents. To find a program for your child or learn more about what we can do for your family, log on to thechildrenstrust.org or call 211. The Children's Trust, because all children are our children. Welcome back. Still with us are Deputy Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Russell Benford, and Superintendent of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, Alberto Carvalho. Joining the conversation is Morris Copeland, Director of the Miami-Dade County Juvenile Services Department. So, Superintendent, we're going to start with you um, this time. Um, and I want to talk about this um, effort um, called Together for Children. For the folks uh, at home who may not be familiar with it, first of all, could you give us a little idea of what it's about and also how is it different from what we've seen in the past? You know, more important than what it's about, it's how it came together. Mm -hmm. It came together as a result of uh, community-wide frustration over this cycle of violence that continues to victimize young people right here in Miami-Dade. Uh, over a 24-month period of time, over 60 kids were shot and killed in our community. You know, choosing to do nothing is an option, an option that we could no longer live with. So a number of entities representing, you know, vast sectors of our community, including the school system, the county, state attorney's office, number of county entities and the Children's Trust came together in a convening to, number one, understand what are the root causes of the violence that is so pervasive in our community. Secondly, can we really hone in on research that speaks to this issue? but also engage in community conversations to understand what really is going on in these communities, obtain feedback from community leaders and community members prior to even uh, really stepping on action plans to address the issue. And then agree to not work in silos, to collaborate, share information, share research, and ultimately develop mm -hmm. community action plans 
with the support of community agencies, not-for-profits, and other organizations to really address the issue of youth violence, not just by being reactive, but by being proactive, involving all elements that we know work, early identification, prevention, intervention, and yes, enforcement as well, but doing it all up front to, in fact, save kids. Russell, recently your boss, the mayor, uh, delivered the State of the County Address. How important is addressing youth violence to the mayor and your administration? Well, it's, it's, it's his highest priority, mm -hmm. and I think um, this collaboration together for children, one of the things that we committed was that all of us as agencies, mm -hmm. you know, the school board, Children's Trust, United Way, Miami-Dade County, that we would be purposeful in our decision-making process and be thoughtful to uh, keep children first in the decisions that we make collectively. And so as we go into a new calendar year, uh, we want to make sure that our, our parks and recreations program, our programs through our juvenile services department, our police department, even our fire department, we're developing new programs and finding ways to collaborate on behalf of our children and to make sure that during the course of our daily uh, business that we're thoughtful of children and making sure we provide opportunities for them to be successful in whatever we do. And so uh, I think it's going to be an incredible opportunity and that's the mayor's charge you know, to us here at Miami-Dade County is to keep our kids first uh, and make sure that we're doing as much as we possibly can on behalf of our children. Mr. Koblen, yes. here's something interesting. <clears throat> Juvenile arrests have been going down steadily over the years. But I'm, I'm looking over my notes and I see that it's a very different story when it comes to youth gun violence. Right. Right? Now, you're close to the ground. What's going on? Why is this problem escalating? Well, I, I think that uh, first and foremost, I have to just uh, congratulate our community for being so proactive in the area of making sure that we put our children first, uh, because without that, we would not have had the level of success we've had in terms of reducing our overall arrest population by 80% mm -hmm. since yeah. uh, 2000. Right. So I think that's phenomenal, yeah. and we have to take credit for that mm -hmm. in that regard. Uh, but we still are suffering and have the challenge of reaching a small group of young people uh, that have been uh, through uh, numerous forms of trauma, uh, they have access to weapons like never before. Yeah. Uh, mental health, substance abuse, uh, the lack of mm -hmm. guidance and mentoring. Uh, many of them have uh, fathers that are in the system, in the, in the criminal justice mm -hmm. system. So there's a lot of, of layers to this. Uh, it's no one answer. Uh, but if we focus on those things that we know that work and the, and the work that we've done over the years mm -hmm. and we replicate that and we build it to scale, mm -hmm. I think will really, really, uh, really impact that and mitigate some of that, some of that negative, e egregious kinds of acts that we've seen lately. Miami-Dade County is one of many urban cities facing these challenges. We see it across the nation, the violence spreading. But, you know, as Together for Children, we're being proactive, getting in front of it. We have long-term and short-term strategies as a coalition. So let's talk about what we're doing. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, would you like to start off? Sure. I mean, I, I spoke about it uh, to a certain extent with my introductory comments, but I'd like to, to begin by really addressing, complementing and supplementing what, uh, what Mr. Copeland said. You know, one of the reasons, I believe, is hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are about 20 zip codes in our community. We learned this through our collective research where most acts of violence are happening, uh, but there are some commonalities to those 20 right. zip codes. Right. And by the way, that was the first phase of the work, mm -hmm. was do we know enough of what, what's happening in our community and can we be transparent and honest to acknowledge it, to speak about it with community members so we are all on the same page in terms of the stark reality facing our kids. Mm -hmm. So there is a degree of hopelessness. Uh, there is a degree of unemployment or underemployment. These are the same zip codes where uh, children's attendance in school uh, are the lowest compared to the rest of the district. These are the same zip codes uh, where kids are more likely to drop out of school. Yeah. These are the same zip codes that often have a scarcity of social activities mm -hmm. beyond the last school bell. Put all those elements together, and then we recognize that children are indeed at risk because the safety net uh, often devolves, you know, is eliminated mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the ringing of last bell. So what are the sp specific strategies that are being used to tackle the problem? So under Together for Children, uh, we understand the data. We've consulted with the community. We have committed funding uh, mm -hmm. to support activities. Mm -hmm. And now on a basis of the gaps in X community versus Y community, mm -hmm. we are going to make the appropriate investments through a competitive process to bring in social agencies to provide mm -hmm. 
those personal civic adequacy training for the parents, for the children, those athletic music activities for the kids, those psychological support, mental health support for both children and adults, everything that may be lacking in these specific neighborhoods, in these specific areas uh, within these 20 zip codes are going to, is going to be addressed through the collaboration that's represented by the various entities. So this is the second time now that I hear the words mental health, mm -hmm. Mr. Koblen. How important is that um, factor uh, mental, play in? <clears throat> mental health is one of the top areas of, of, uh, of risk factors that we see when we deal with our mm -hmm. children, because we assess all the children that come through our facility. And you mentioned a lot of these children have been through traumatic experiences. Very traumatic experiences. So many of them have that? been shot before, many of them have gone through numerous systems. Uh, it, it's extremely important because of the mere fact that our mantra is hurt people hurt people. And so we don't get to the bottom of the hurt, the root causes mm -hmm. of why these children are acting out then we're, we're just wasting our time. So right. that's what the efforts are, are focused on, really trying to hone in on those root causes so that we can stop this before it even starts. Now, we have, I mean, I think there's, there's plenty of studies out there that, that show us that the earlier we attack problems, yeah. the bigger an impact we have. Um, how is the children's trust, what kind of role are we playing in reaching these children early on? I think, as everybody mentioned, we don't want to be reactive. We want, we want to get in front of this. And the, the biggest bang for your buck or return on investment is investing early, investing right. young. Uh, so we want to do this well. We do it. The, the trust does it through investment and parenting. You have a lot of parents who really love their kids but may need additional support in how to raise them. So we want to support the family. The children don't live in programs. Children don't grow up and they're not raised in schools. It is the family and the family unit. So as we make the family unit stronger, this community is stronger. Early literacy, uh, quality child care, elevating that so children come into the schools by kindergarten prepared uh, to learn. And early development, childhood development and recognition, kids with special needs, kids who need additional assistance at a very early age, that we intervene and we give them the resources that they need. Russell, you would agree that, that we have to tackle these problems early on. How do, how do we keep this momentum going then? Well, absolutely. And, and you know, we, there are four specific areas that, that we're looking at with respect to, to uh, Together for Children. It starts first and foremost with early education. Mm -hmm. As the superintendent pointed out, we've been able to identify these 20 zip codes that our children are at highest risk uh, for either being a victim of or committing violence. So the first thing we look at is in those 20 zip codes, do parents have access to quality early education? Mm -hmm. You know, can we get these children to first grade that are prepared to yeah. succeed? Can they read? You know, do, do parents have a safe place to keep their children? Then as we shift to the second phase, it's, it's a middle school, we look at things like attendance. And, and, and you think about it, why would a second grader miss 40 days of school? Mm -hmm. Young children want to go to school, they want to learn. Um, obviously, if they're missing large chunks of school, there's something going on in the household. Mm -hmm. And that's where we can use our resources to deploy folks, you know, like Morris Copeland has, where we can, we can actually send caseworkers, social workers to a household to start to figure out what's going on, to peel back those layers of an onion so that we can really provide those families and the children with those additional resources they need to be successful. And, and that's mm -hmm. really what we talk about, as Jim said, mm -hmm. the earlier we can identify a problem mm -hmm. and apply solutions that work, data-driven, you know, have a track record of success, if we can do that, um, if we continue to do that, I think we're gonna see a difference in this, in this issue that we have in Miami-Dade County with respect to youth violence. But it starts young, even as, as young as uh, preschool. And I think the idea is also when the superintendent said that um, we are no longer working in silos. I think that's a very yeah. key mm -hmm. part of this. Wouldn't you agree? And I think that is the element that if we are successful, and by the way, we cannot not be successful, mm -hmm. considering yeah. what's at stake. That it's then not an option. It, uh, it's not, not an option. Right. That then is replicable across the country. You know, Chicago is dealing with it. Many oh. different, or particularly urban settings, are dealing with this. And the mayor and I, uh, the deputy mayor, uh, the director, uh, Jim, we all recognize uh, that uh, finding a solution for this will require extreme collaboration at all levels. Uh, and everybody spoke to it. It's not just collaborating, it's developing practical, implementable solutions that address early identification of the risk factors and who those kids are who are at risk. Uh, early, not only identification, uh, but actual prevention strategies. Intervention, so you prevent the problem, but there are some kids who are already, sadly, in a pipeline of the problem. So we need to intervene aggressively and rescue them. Sadly, there are some kids who are already under Moore's uh, 
protective services. Mm -hmm. So we need a plan uh, to enforce, but also to provide a pathway towards re-entry back into society. We cannot have kids who are discarded just because they went through the juvenile justice system. Cool. There needs to be an, a re-entry plan that gives them uh, hope towards the future. One thing I'd like to say very quickly, I think everybody would agree here, is that some people out there believe that there are two camps. There are bad kids and good kids. A lot of the violence that happens in our community and the difference between the perpetrator and the victim is one of timing often. It's who got to whom first. That's, right. That's why they all deserve the same level of assistance, the same level of protection, inspiration, teaching, and safeguards uh, to protect them all. I think we could do a whole entire new show uh, on this. Uh, thank you all for being with us, and thank goodness that we're all working together. Um, we're out of time, I'm afraid, but it's great, again, that, that we're tackling this issue together. And you, too, can do your part. Visit CrimestoppersKids.org and donate to a special fund dedicated to helping catch those who commit violent crimes against children in Miami-Dade. And before we go, here's an update on a really positive opportunity for children and youth in our community. The annual free Young Talent Big Dreams Talent Search is back for children ages 8 to 17. The categories are music, dance, voice, original composition, and spoken word. The first of seven auditions is Sunday, February 12th at the Merkel Theater in Coral Gables. So if you know a talented youngster, spread the word. Visit thechildrenstrust.org to find out about audition dates and locations, competition rules, prizes, and much more. That's all the time we have for now. I'm Jim Hodge. On behalf of Ileana Varela and everyone at the Children's Trust, thank you for watching. Our Children is brought to you by the Children's Trust. The Children's Trust invests in programs and services that help make children healthy, safe, loved, ready to learn, succeed in school and in life. To access its funded programs and services in Miami-Dade County, visit thechildrenstrust.org because all children are our children. Young Talent Big Dreams, the most comprehensive local youth talent competition for performers ages 8 to 17, is auditioning talented kids throughout Miami-Dade County. Presented by the Actors Playhouse at the Miracle Theater and the Children's Trust, talented kids compete for prizes, scholarships, and performance opportunities. For complete details, visit these websites or call 211. The most important 20 minutes of your day is spent reading to a child. Make books a part of your family's daily routine. Point to and talk about the pictures. Ask your child to repeat the words. Answer questions. Talk about it. Pop! On his head, we saw little cat. If your child is three or will be soon, they can get a free book every month from the Children's Trust. Just enroll them in the free Read to Learn book club. Sign up at thechildrenstrust.org or call 211. The Children's Trust, because all children are our children.